Morning Tulips. I've got another book to read to you today. It's one, another one of my favourite writers, Judith Carr. She wrote The Tiger Who Came to Tea, which I have read you a few times at school, so I think you might remember that one. Um, this one is about a, a funny little cat, a forgetful cat, called Mog. This one is called Mog's Bad Thing. This is a picture of Mog. One day, Mog was coming to her garden. She had been in, on a mouse hunt all night and she was very tired. Mog thought, I need a big sleep. But first, she went around her garden to see if it was just as she'd left it. The grass was still there. The flowers were still there. The tree was still there. And so was her lavatory behind the tree. Mog thought, that's all right then. It was starting to rain, so she went into the house. Mr Bunce from the pet shop was there with Mr Thomas. He said, hello Mog, all ready for the cat show tomorrow? Debbie said, there's going to be a cat show in our garden. Mog and you can be in it. What if it rains, said Nicky, all the cats will get wet. No, said Mr Bunce, because I'm going to put up a big tent and the cat show will be inside it. Debbie said, perhaps Mog will win a prize. Mr Thomas looked at Mog and Mog looked at him. He said, well, you never know. Mog had her breakfast and went to have her big sleep. It was a very big sleep. It was so big that she only woke up after everyone else had gone to bed. Mog thought, now for another mouse hunt. But when she looked out, she had a terrible shock. Her garden had disappeared. The grass had disappeared. The flowers had disappeared. The tree had disappeared. And worst of all, so had her lavatory behind the tree. Instead, there in the dark was a big, white, flappy, floppy thing. And the flappy floppy thing moved in the wind. It went flap, flap, flap. And it went flop, flop, flop with a loud floppy noise. Mog thought, I'd better run. Then she thought, but I want my lavatory. Suddenly, the flappy floppy thing flopped right at her and it nearly caught Mog on the nose. Mog ran. She ran back into her house. She ran through all the rooms in case the flappy floppy thing was coming after her. She thought, what shall I do? What shall I do? Girls and boys, do you know what the flappy floppy thing was? It was the tent they put up for the cat show in, the, in Mog's garden, but Mog doesn't know it's a tent because she's a cat. And then Mog did a bad thing. She didn't mean to do it, but she did it. She did it in Mr. Thomas's chair. Then she hid under the sofa where the fl flappy floppy thing couldn't get her. She was too upset to think anymore, so she went to sleep. I'm afraid she did a poo-poo on the chair. She woke up in the morning to a great noise. It was a shouting noise and Mr. Thomas was doing the shouting. He shouted, look what that horrible cat has done in my chair. Where is that horrible cat? Just wait till I find her. Mog didn't want to, Mr Thomas to find her. When no one was looking, she ran out from under the sofa and out of the room and to the very top of the house. She thought, no one will ever find me here. I'll stay here forever and ever. I'll never go downstairs again. She was very sad, but downstairs, they were all too busy to think about Mog. Mr Bunce had come to get ready for the cat show. He fixed a hole in the tent where the rain was coming through. Then he put a table for the cats to sit on and chairs for the cats' people. Debbie said, it's time Mog was got ready too. Where is she? No one had seen her. They all shouted, Mog, where are you, Mog? Mrs Thomas, Thomas said, oh dear, 
Here we come, here come the first cats for the cat show. But there was no Mog. They looked in every place they could think of, but still there was no Mog. Debbie said, but we can't have a cat show without Mog. Don't worry, said Mr Bunce. I expect she'll suddenly appear and surprise us all. There was no time to go looking for Mog because more cats were arriving. There was the Siamese from round the corner and Blackie from the high street and Ginger from the paper stop shop and old Mr Ben's Tommy and Fluffy who had once bitten Mog's ear and Oscar who ate three tins of cat food a day and a whole lot of others. They all went into the big tent. The cats looked at each other and the cats people looked at each other and at each other's cats. There was a prize for the most unusual cat in the show and everyone wondered which cat would win. A lot of people thought Fluffy was unusual. He's only unusual as an ear biter, said Nicky. Mr Bunce went around making notes. He couldn't make notes about Mog because she was not there. Wherever can she be? said Debbie. Mog was getting bored with her hiding place. She thought she'd look out of the window. The flappy floppy thing had stopped flapping. It didn't look so bad in daylight. And there was her tree. It was there. It was still there, Mog thought. I could jump down on the flippy fl flappy floppy thing and into my garden. Then she thought, but it might flap at me. Then she thought, shall I? Inside the tent, Mr Bunce had finished making notes. He said, it's time to choose the winner of the show. We can choose Bertie, who has unusual eyes, or Oscar, who is unusually big, or Fluffy, who is unusually furry, or Min, who is unusually, well, unfurry, or Mrs Pussy, who has a very unusual number of kittens. But something was wrong. Fluffy was getting wet. It was raining on Fluffy. This is Fluffy. Can you see the rain coming down on Fluffy? Oh dear, said Mr Bunce. It's another hole in the roof. The rain will come through. Then something more than rain came through. It was something furry. It was something stripy. Nicky shouted, it's Mog! Well, I never, said Mr Bunce, and in a little dress. I thought Mog might surprise us, but this beats everything. Mog tried to say something, but only a very sm small noise came out. Meow! Then Mr Bunce said, In this show we have seen some unusual cats, but none as unusual as Mog. She has flown through the air like a circus cat. She is an abracat, I mean an acrobat. She has amazed us all, and I think the prize for the most unusual cat should go to Mog. Mog. Everyone clapped and cheered. Well, almost everyone. Mog got a very special prize, and Mr and Mrs Thomas got a certificate. They were very proud. Mr Thomas was so proud that he was no longer cross about his chair. And when everyone had gone home, Mr Bunce took his tent away again and Mog's garden reappeared. It was all there, just as before. The grass was there, the flowers were there, the tree was there, and so was her lavatory behind the tree. She was very happy. So it all ended happy, happily ever after for Mog. She does get a little bit confused sometimes because she doesn't know what the people are doing. So she didn't understand that the tent was for the cat show and she got all terrified and freaked out and went and hid in the top of the house. I'm so glad she got out again and came back to her family and they didn't lose her forever. Um, next time I might find another story about Mog. I have two or three of them. I'll have a look through my set of books. Um, have a lovely afternoon, everybody, and we'll see you soon. Bye.